Hi, this is the man from Modesto. I'm making this video in response to another titled um, Satan Has a Son by Dr. Jean Kim. Now, this teaching uh, is makes a lot of assumptions and is not a logical conclusion. I'm going to get into why I say that. And I'm, at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about why this teaching is dangerous. Uh, firstly, let's go to uh, Genesis 3.1. Now, this teaching basically says that um, Satan has a son, and but it, it really gets into this really bad teaching, which is that uh, Satan fornicated with Eve, and Satan is the father of Cain. So now I'm going to discuss why this is illogical and why it's actually biologically uh, a very poor assumption. So in Genesis 3.1, we see that uh, Adam and Eve are speaking with a serpent. There's a serpent in the garden. It plainly describes him as a serpent. Elsewhere, uh, when God is laying out the curses on the three of them, he says, you know, you will be the most vile of all the beasts of the field. So we see that serpent, the serpent is a beast. It's definitely not a human. There are two uh, man folk at the time, Adam the first and Eve the second. There are just the two of them. They are the only ones who can produce other humans. Like breeds with like and produces like. So there's no reason at all to expect that a serpent is going to be physically capable of impregnating a human female. One, there's obviously the mechanical block. Their mechanical parts just aren't designed to go together. Second, there's a gametic block. Sperm of one species will not bind with the egg of another species. Even if somehow that were forced to happen, the genes would not pair up. They don't have the same number of genes. They would not pair up and the child would, the, the, basically the zygote would abort. Uh, the fetus would abort at some stage. Like the body would realize, oh, this is, all growing all wrong. Something's wrong here. It's not working out and we just aborted. Most pregnancies, I think something like a third of natural pregnancies are aborted uh, in contemporary society. So uh, the idea that this serpent is going to impregnate a human female is ridiculous. And the other thing is that at this point, um, I, know, I think it's, it's much more difficult to impregnate uh, a virgin woman, right? Can a snake break the hymen of a human female? This is all so ridiculous. There are so many reasons to think that this will never happen, that this teaching is really, really, really absurd. It's really absurd. So, now, Genesis 4.1. Now, this is where this uh, Gene Kim gets into this teaching, and he, and he really kind of ties it all into this passage here. Gen Genesis 4.1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and to bear Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Genesis 4-2, first part. And she again bare his brother, Abel. So, uh, what happens here? Okay, Adam knew his wife. Now, the implication, now this guy is going to say that, oh, well, they were conceived together and born together. They were actually twins. There's no reason here to think that at all. Uh, when I read this naturally all by myself, without somebody front-loading me, telling me what it means, uh, what I understood was uh, Adam and Eve became married. They started uh, intercourse, which normally you would expect. This is something that began and was then ongoing. How often or how regularly, we don't know. Uh, we have some expectation from later on in the Old Testament. We see that, you know, what's his name was 357 years old and he begat, you know, son of what's his name, number one. And then when he was 530 years, you know, more than 100 years later, he begat son of what's his name, number two, right? There are these huge spans of decades between the births of their children. So here, you know, why are we going to assume that they're exactly born on the same day? Well, because of this word again. But this is very, it's speculative. You can interpret this however you want. And she again, so she bore Cain, and then she again bore his brother Abel. So does it mean again in the same birthing process on the same day, laid out in the same place uh, with her husband helping her, she delivers these two twins? I don't think so. I think it means, and she again bore, meaning bore for nine months and then birthed. I think that's what it means. And again, 
she was pregnant a second time. Again, you have to infer where the again applies. Does it mean again immediately or again after five years, after 20 years? You don't know. In these passages, time moves very fast. Between Genesis 3.24, where they're pushed out of the Bible, and Genesis, I mean, where they're pushed out of the Garden of Eden, and Genesis 4.1, we have no idea how much time passes. The interpretation that both of them were gestated together with different fathers, uh, Abel conceived by Adam and Cain conceived by the serpent, implies that uh, the serpent had sex in the garden and then immediately Adam has to have sex with her again. <clears throat> and it also implies that you know, Eve had to release two eggs you know, very quickly together. An uncommon occurrence. So you're just statistically, the odds are just really against this. And again, you don't know how much time passes. And you know, Adam knew his wife when, ten years after leaving the garden, a hundred years, a thousand years after leaving the garden. You don't know. You don't know. It's really unclear. I've gotten a man from the Lord, and she again bare his brother Abel. When, after how much time? It's to say it's the, it's together that they're. It's, it's an assumption that's a very poor assumption to assume that this, a serpent can impregnate a human woman is absurd. There's no reason logically from our experience that tells us that that could be possible in any way. It's just really, really, there's, there's a reproductive isolation, there's a pre-zygotic isolation there. Uh, even if, you know, even things that are relatively close, you know, speciated not too long ago, some people have success, successfully hybridized, you know, lions and tigers. You can go look up the liger online, right? But it's sterile. This is another thing. The, the hybrids are often sterile and they can't reproduce. So you don't get a lineage. So now, so just one more point. Uh, Jacob and Esau are born. They were twins. They had the same father and the same mother. They, there's a lot of detail about which one was born first because that is the person who rightfully should receive the inheritance. It's the person who rightfully should receive it. Now there's this interesting thing that, um, you know, it goes to Jacob and then later we see that it goes to Abel, both who were the second born, but lawfully it's the firstborn son who is the rightful heir, right? There's no discussion of that in the birth of uh, Cain. He's the firstborn son, it's just mentioned, he was born. And again, she bore another son, Abel. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Abel. So uh, to me, it's, it's the natural process that they were born one and then the other. There's no explanation, oh, they were born together, but this one came out first. There's no extra ex explanation as we see in the, the story of uh, Jacob and Esau. So now, why is this a problem? Why is this teaching a problem? And here's why it's a problem, I see that there's a large-scale, uh, uh, expansive, uh, broadly applied plan to deceive the youth. And I have met people, I have, this, I have chatted with people online who are under this deception, suffering under this lie. And the lie goes something like this. There are certain genetic combinations that God will never accept. And if you have those genetics, there's no chance for you ever at all to receive salvation. Um, they use the book of Enoch. and the book of Enoch, uh, the sons of God uh, bred with the daughters of Eve and produced these giants, right? A totally different subspecies. They produced these giants and the giants were going around eating men. They were like eating flesh and uh, this was never permitted until after the flood. You can go look that up after the flood. God makes some promises to Noah. He says you'll only live to be 120 after this and uh, now you are permitted to eat meat, right? That's, that's the first time it's mentioned. That's the first time they're given that permission. But these giants are eating meat. God doesn't like their behavior. He doesn't like who they are, right? So in the book of Enoch, those people are all destroyed. Now this false teaching that, is, that desires to trap people into believing they can never be saved says that you know because those giants had these genes, God wanted to wipe them all out. God wanted to completely eradicate them. So <clears throat> a problem with that teaching is, is that in the Old Testament we see later that those genetics 
have become manifest again. There still are some giants being born uh, with six fingers and six toes. And even today, we can see, you can go look online, and there are people walking around with you know, six fingers, we got six toes, and they, they posted pictures online, right? There's nothing wrong with that. You can be saved, you can go to heaven if you have six fingers or six toes. Genetics does not block you from heaven. And very interestingly, in this exact story about Cain and Abel, God warns Cain, listen, you came, you kept the best of the harvest for yourself, and you refused to give it to me. But listen, if you will do what's right, you will be received. But if you will not, then, you know, evil is lurking at the door. So because of his behavior, evil came into Cain's life. And that spirit was a spirit of murder. And it moved Cain to murder his own brother. That was the problem. It was his behavior, what he chose to do. He put himself and his own wants above what he knew he ought to submit to God. Right? That's the real problem. That's the real problem. Not his genetics. Not because his father was the serpent. That's not true. His father was Adam. So if someone has told you, like, oh, your fate is just this, your fate is just this, you know, uh, these new movies that are getting into the minds and hearts of children, oh, if you're born of a certain lineage, then it means that you're destined to be a witch. You have to be a witch. It's your destiny. You're the son of Zeus. You, you know, you're going to receive these powers. And, you're, and people are desiring that, and they're opening their heart to it, these youth. And demon spirits are coming in. And this is the kind of thing, and then they're going to tell them, like, no, stay with us because that is who you are. It's who you were born to be, and you can only be that. You can never go to Jesus. A complete lie. Anyone can go to Jesus at any time. When can you change something? The Holy Spirit told me, when can you change something? At the beginning or any time in between. Because I was hooked on this thing like, you know, the first time you do something, that's going to format everything that follows. The Holy Spirit's like, no. You can change it at any time in between. If you've been living using witchcraft, if you've been living using uh, you know, white witchcraft or sorcery or anything else, you can quit that right now by the power of Jesus. If you've been living in sin and you've been rejecting Jesus and you want to receive Jesus, you can do that right now by opening your heart to Jesus and saying, Father, I want you. I accept your salvation plan, the blood of Jesus, to cleanse me and to forgive me on Judgment Day. And then you need to go out and find out what Jesus says that means and how you should live a righteous life that will draw you closer and closer into his holy, loving presence. So is this, you know, are there people walking around who are the genetic descendants of the serpent in the garden? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Are there people who don't know who their father is because they are spiritual followers of false teachings and evil? Unfortunately, uh, yeah, that's the case. You know, the tares are seeds that were planted spiritually. You can plant a seed of truth in a person, the seed about the good news of salvation or the seed about the good news of the kingdom of God, and that seed can grow in a person if they're good soil. That seed begets a plant, which is analogously called, you know, the rightful wheat or the tares, right? Don't go hurting the tares. Don't go tearing up the wheat because that tear can spiritually be converted by the blood of Jesus. It can be born again. It can be made new in the image and likeness of God. Genetics has nothing to do with it. Oh, Noah, he was spared because he had perfect genetics. No, he didn't. Oh, well, you know, maybe he did, but that's not the reason God saved him. Noah obeyed God. When God said, build the ark and get in it, Noah told everyone, they all heard that they ought to get in the ark, but they didn't. Noah was the one who obeyed God, and his sons and their three wives, they went with Noah, and that's why they were spared, because of obedience, because of a right heart, nothing to do with genetics. And that's why this teaching is so dangerous. It's ridiculous to believe that a serpent bred with a woman. There's, there's a lot of assumptions in this teaching, given as I viewed it by Gene uh, Mark, whatever his name was, Gene Kim, there are a lot of problems with it. There are a lot of assumptions, and it's wrong. The conclusion is erroneous. 2.3 million people have seen that video. 2.3 million people got disinformed. And I'll tell you what will happen. After a few months, they will forget where they heard that. They might even think it's their own idea. They're going to tell it to other people. It's a big, big problem. Share this video because people need to be disabused of these lies of Satan because this teaching, this false teaching, is a part of a bigger plan 
to mentally bind people into a false belief that Jesus will not receive them. But he will. Your genetics, your birth, who your father was, that has nothing to do with salvation because your new father instantly becomes Almighty God. Your new rabbi becomes Jesus. Your new teacher becomes the Holy Spirit. You become a son, you become my brother, and I will be your brother when you enter into the kingdom, when you become born again. We will all be together sons of God. We'll all be together the bride of Christ. <laughs> I just love that. It's so fantastic. Whew. But watch out for these false teachings and warn the brethren. I'm, I'm asking you to share this uh, wherever you can because this is a teaching that goes around and it has other forms, not just this one person who you know has posted this poor teaching, this misleading teaching, but it has many, many forms, including uh, movies, children's films, all kinds of things. So I'm asking you to share this message. This is the man from Modesto reminding you as always to pray or be defeated.